Hey, what are we talking about? That? Let's, go, let's go back a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, I guess your your life is, has been fairly up and down, especially as a young bloke. Um, what's your first experience of running with the coppers? Oh, first experience running with the coppers. Can you remember it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's either one of the two. They were very close to each other when I was in about year four, year five in primary school. So it's either it's either when I stabbed a kid in the schoolyard or I had allegedly burned down this big sugar mill in Holston Park and got questioned about it. Um that was so. I, was like, I don't know which one was first. It was just, the kid you stab was like a, a full on stab. Or was it just a you know like a a quick stab? You know what I mean? Like no, no, it I wasn't mean, a f- stabbing through the heart or something. No, no, it wasn't a frenzied stabbing. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. just me like learning how to just use around. knives and going at him, and he went to block it and went through his hand and yeah. yeah. So 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 what's interesting about that? What, what school were you doing? Like, Canterbury Primary. At Canterbury Primary. Yeah. Okay, so I went to school at Lakemba. Okay. Yep. So when we were at school. It wasn't unusual to have a knife at school. When mm. I was a kid growing up, everyone had knives. You weren't allowed to take flick knife, but you took yeah. lock knives and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we played games like uh, a game of stretch where uh, you would stand up with me, stand up with me, put our feet apart, and I used to throw the knife over there to the right. You'd had to step into that spot and then you'd throw the knife onto the other side and I'd have to say, I mean, you'd stretch me out. And the only way I could bring my legs back to normal is I had to throw the knife between your feet. And uh, actually get between your feet, and often the knife would go astray yep. and get end up in blokes' ankles and legs and stuff like that. And when people get shocked when they hear these stories about you, you, know, you stabbed a kid, um, it's sort of not that bad, was it? Like, I, that, I don't look at it as that bad. I, it's not you know, that good, but it's no, not it's that, not good. And people carry on because, like, uh, when I tell the story, I have like little chuckles about it. But I don't know. They just don't understand. They're, everyone's hypersensitive. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not that bad though. I mean, nah, nah, you, know, you know, like sort of think, oh, I can't carry this massive guilt. No thing. way. I didn't, it wasn't something that was atrocious and yeah, changed yeah, someone's yeah. life. You know what I mean? There's, there's People ask that about a lot of my crimes in general and the way that I see that is that, well, the mentality that I have that was give, that I was raised with in jail is there is putrid acts um, and then it's not all crime are putrid acts. But a lot of putrid acts are the things that you would presume to be putrid acts. It's doing things to a child, doing things to like a, a grandma or an 80-year-old, um, a rapist. They're, they're the things you see as putrid yeah, acts. Yeah, full-on you know? victims. Yeah, they're putrid acts. Yeah. Like there's no way around that. It's it's a universal understanding that these are putrid acts, whether you're from Sydney or from Nairobi, like they're putrid acts. And I've never done one of those putrid acts. I've done a lot of crimes. So I just have a chuckle about a lot of them, including that. Well, yeah, but, and it, it's funny, it's interesting you should say it because, you know, like, a, you know, fortunate, unfortunately, have, whatever I look at it, I'm going to grow up with mates like that and, uh, you know, where I grew up, that's pretty normal. And uh, people did things and regrettably they got into trouble for it but they, they don't really weren't bad people to me um, and generally speaking they always treated me and my family really well. And you mentioned about, what is universally considered to be a putrid act mm. and in jail there's a view about an accepted view yeah. what is a putrid act yeah and uh and it's and and those people everybody knows who they are when they turn up mm. in, into the jail and it's like uh jail has the really basic fundamental laws about what you how you conduct your life yeah. and how you behave what did you learn from that that experience because you've been to, to jail and, you know, you've lived that life. Yep. What did you learn from that about and what have you taken out of jail from that? Ooh, um, I, w- I would say that the things that most immediately come to mind is is what is and what isn't a dog and the way to live your life, like, in, in terms of that. Um, and that is, in my opinion, in jail opinion, is that if somebody who chooses to benefit from a criminal lifestyle then to avoid the consequences by dobbing on someone else. That's a dog. Um, a lot of people get that wrong. A lot of people think that if you're a normal person and you call the coppers on someone, you're a dog, but it doesn't work like that. So you, you know what I mean? It's not as, as black and white as that. Um, so that's one thing that I always ho- hold to me. And you another, live by that now? Yeah, of course, of yep. course. If, if I'm a criminal, if I benefit it in any way or glamorize it or even use that image, which I, I'm not a criminal anymore, 
but I still have the stories and the image of a criminal. So then I should still live by that. Unless I fully just give it up and become a Christian and work at Woolworths and be like, no, that was naughty and I feel bad for everything that I, then I would feel free to dob on people. But I'm not at that stage yet. Um, so that's one thing. And another thing, the biggest lesson I ever learned in jail is, is um, to never do something for someone that wouldn't do the same for you. And that's the biggest lesson I ever learned. And it was the very first time I went in jail. And like, coincidentally, it was the very first night or the very first time I went in jail. It happened to be the biggest lesson by someone I didn't know. And it was an older Koori fella from Campbelltown. I don't remember his name. It wasn't a full jail bird, but been in a couple of times. And he turned to me and he said, he said that lesson, don't do something for someone that wouldn't do the same for you. And I just go, yeah, yeah, sweet, sweet. And he goes, what does that mean? Like, what am I telling you? Do you understand? And I said to him, I go, don't do stuff for people. And he said, no, that's not what I'm saying to you. I said, think of it this way. If you have some bloke there and he tells you, bro, do you reckon you can chuck that in the bin for me? That's okay to chuck something in the bin for someone. But ask yourself, if you ask him the same question, would he turn around and say, fuck off, idiot, who do you think I am? Then don't do it for him, no matter what his consequences are to you. And as simple as that. But if you believe that person will do it for you, then do it for them. Do anything they ask you if you believe they would give you the same. And I just thought that that's so, that's such a great um, concept that applies to just life in general. And it stops you from being someone that won't do anything for anyone. And it stops you being a pushover at the same time. Why do you think this Guri fella told you that? Why did he tell me? I really don't know, eh? I really don't know. Didn't know him from a bar of soap. Did you, did you meet up with him? Did you become friend, friendly with him? Not at all. I probably spent like two nights. So when you go into jail, like you're on a truck with a bunch of people you'll never see again. You get put into a transit wing, which is randomly. You don't get to select your cellmate. You're probably not even there for a week. Your cellmates will come and go every night. They're all just off the street and you're waiting to be shipped out and it just so happened to be who I put in with. Maybe spent a night or two with him, never seen him again. 